Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna go ahead and build uh, these two bikes here in the next two videos. I'll do the Superior and the Volari. I showed you guys those on the last video. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them together and this, those also are gonna go inside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, stack these bikes out of here somehow and uh, so I can have some room. To I'm gonna give you a, a little tour of uh, what's going on inside where I have all the other bikes. I actually have to regroup them so I can store them. But let's take a walk in there and check it out. It's a 1973 World Voyager. He's gonna join the fleet. And you guys probably remember all the bikes in the background here. These are all the bikes I've shown in videos, including the Schwinn 6, which at the time was the lineup for the lightweights that I'm collecting. And since I've added uh, like four more that I'm gonna go ahead and update the video at some point. Of course, you guys just saw the video for this one. And this one definitely is gonna be happy to join the fleet. And as you guys know, the lineup includes several bikes. I just am gonna add this one. And then I got the Superior and I got the Volari. All right guys, well I'm gonna go outside and see if I can go ahead and build those other two bikes. All right, so this is what I came up with. Gives me a little bit more room and it allows me to go ahead and play with the, those bikes over there. Went ahead and stacked the lighter bikes on top of the heavier bikes. That definitely uh, got some box out of the way. And these were all in the living room. I went ahead and pulled them out of here because they need to get worked on anyway. So, I just stacked them right there and I'm actually going to pull out, I have a rack back here with those tires on it. I'm going to put that rack on front of this one and then stack one on top of the other to get a little more room. Alright and today is finally the day. So welcome to the vacation. It's already Thursday so I have a few days before I have to go back but I'll go ahead and build this. This should be a pretty uh, easy process. This bike has been maintained and kept playing all along so basically you're going to be detailing it a little bit put it together and make sure everything is uh you know working properly beautiful bike i love the color on it so i'm going to pull it out here in a second but i wanted to show you the care you took in packing this thing this thing is not bouncing anywhere zip tied everywhere so none of the tubes are in danger of getting scratched or any decals getting damaged so I'm very excited to see it packaged this way uh, what you hear in the background is the AC. I'm gonna turn it off because it is kind of uh, noisy. But this is, uh, you know, South Florida, and it's like over 90 degrees out there. It feels like 100. So I put this in here, and actually, it's uh, at 79 now, and it'll eventually get to like 75, 73 if I keep it on all day. But I'm gonna shut her down for a second so I can actually get to it. Here's how I ended up doing these bikes. Here's those two racks that I was talking about next to each other. And I had a third bike in between those. I was able to get quite a few bikes against that wall. And I made some room inside the house for this one. She is on the box. And again, this whole thing's one cluster all attached together. So there was no way for this thing to bounce around and scratch the frame or get loose. So nice job. It looks like this thing I was able to pull it out just in one pull and everything. So that's came out. how you pack a bike. So I took that part off there to hang it. But yeah, this thing definitely traveled well, including uh, all the protection on the fork. Went and put the handlebar up. This thing's got the cool Wyman brake hoods on it. Got the original seat. So this is a seat that's uh, made in uh, Japan. It's Matex is the company. It's got the Adam 440 pedals, just like you see on the Continentals and Sprints. And here's this rim. This thing is really sweet. Nice alloy, super shiny like chrome. Original reflector, and it's got the chrome spokes on it. So. And there she is. He is a yachter. So nice job, Tim, in making this bike look great. I'll go ahead and probably you know, polish out this a little bit. I see a little bit of uh, tarnish that happens over time, so I'll be able to buff that out. Instead of my chrome polish, I'll make that look really good. Get all the chrome tricked out. The rims are really good. They need to be just cleaned. Uh, spokes look really good. So most of the chrome, you can tell, has been detailed at one point. And like anything, you know, you gotta you got do it again. Big stripes that you saw in 73. I have a cool lemon with those same stripes on it. 
But there's the Chicago quality decal and then Pete Cycles, that was a dealer that sold it. So again, this bike in the category, I think it's above the Latour and right underneath the Sports Tour. So I think that's about the only thing that I want to have to do to it. Uh, oh yeah, the pedals, I'll be doing something with those. I'm pretty sure that there's supposed to have a toe clip on there. Which I can certainly get. There's a kickstand on these bikes, which is awesome. So I do have a stand order already. Alright, so I went ahead and pulled off the crank. I'm gonna go ahead and polish it. The easiest way to do it. And uh, looking at this derailleur, it looks like it's kind of pitted. And there's no going back on that. So in this case, you could try to polish that, but you'll still see that pitting. These things I see online a lot. I'm gonna have to definitely change that cable. This cable here should really go straight out all the way to almost to that gear. So it should go straight out and loop that way. That's why it's stressing right there. So we'll make that a little better. And then this one should also be a little bit longer. So that should be a little bit closer to the bottom bracket there. Good news is I buy that stuff by the yard, so I got plenty of it. Yeah, so this should be more like this. This cable should come out right about like that. And then a natural loop like that. And it gives it a nice, you know, angle. So I might have to replace the cable as well. I don't know if it'll be long enough for it to take the extra loop. That's about how that should go. And then on this one, it should really drop down. That's how it should look. And it gives it a little less stress on the cable. It's almost like it's pulling it straight across. So we'll, we'll fix that. And again, the only other thing is this cable here is definitely short compared to the other one. So we'll fix that one as well. Cranks it. As you can see, some of it on the back looks like it's beat up with a chain scarring. Some of that will not come off, but it'll look better once so we clean it up. I'm gonna take these chain rings apart and clean them all individually, put them on the buffer, and should definitely clean up. Here's an example of like one of the derailleurs that I found. This is the GT250, seen up to 74. See how clean this is? I get this for like 15 bucks, and the chrome on it's really clean, you know. They're all gonna have a little bit of scarring right here where the chain hits, but even then, they're still really clean. There's no rust. All right, so I got the trusty Loctite rust dissolver. That gel is good for things like this where you're not taking it off and dipping it into the vapor rust. This works out pretty good. So it's been on there for about an hour so far. I'm gonna let it there for a little longer, but I just put it everywhere basically. And it's not gonna cure, you know, some of that damage up there, but at least it will take the rust that's in there and it'll look a little cleaner even though you'll still see the, the pitting on it. So here's how it turned out. As you can see, it polished up a little bit better, but that damage is definitely there. So again, chrome plating is basically like paint. Once it gets pitted and starts flicking off, it's a done deal. I did see several of these online. I was really excited about it. And the most expensive one was like $24, but there's one for 13, a couple for 19, and they're all really clean. So I'll be able to put a replacement on it with no problem. But at least I wanted to see what it looked like clean. So it's not bad now, but definitely a nice little bike. I went ahead and uh, took these apart as well. I'm gonna go ahead and go through and just detail them completely. Get the rest off the back of those. Uh, dip those in the evaporizer. Yeah, these uh, caps look really good. That one actually is the one that's got the damage on it, but that's typical. That one's perfect. A lot of times they'll have dents on them. And so. I did uh, check out online for some pressed off toe clips. I'm gonna get them and white straps so it'll look nice so anyway i'm about to pull this out here's uh, overnight of the all the parts for the crank and we'll go ahead and get that done i got the buffer ready over here and uh here's all the pieces so i'm gonna go ahead and start on these Well, this one's done came out really good so that buffer definitely uh it's a shortcut and it got out some of that blemish that i thought was in there for good so so that'll look really good 
So we'll go ahead and do the next piece. And here's the main part of the crank. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one next. I did this by hand yesterday a little bit, and I want to make sure that you know all this uh, little debris comes off of it. So let's go ahead and knock this one out. Alright, well, this one came out pretty good. But I'll put these together. It's about as good as it's gonna get. Definitely much better. Alright, and there she is, all done, all together. So I'm gonna head and put her on the bike now. Alright, so I went ahead and pulled the other side off. So I was moving this around and it felt fine when the, you know when it had both uh, arms on it. But once you turn it with your fingers when you realize that it needs a little adjustment, it looks like it's got new grease on it. I can see that it's been in service recently. However, it appears that it was too tight. So I just backed off the lock ring and then this right here is your bearing cup. So I backed this off a little bit and then backed that off a bit and there's still no play. And now it's spinning great. It yeah, should be good to go. So it's spinning nice. And this thing's good to go as well. Here's some other stuff I got going on here. Um, here's the pedals. Came out pretty sweet. I went ahead and uh, I'm going to use these clips from the World Voyager. I'll change them out later. But because these, these didn't have a reflector on the other side, I wanted to make sure the bike looked complete. So I rid of all the rust on, on the back of these uh, reflectors. So, so I'll be putting that on later and then that'll go on the bike. These are the ones that came with the bike and they're not in bad shape, but that bolt there is pretty crusty and that's what happens to them. Uh, you can polish that up, no problem, but I get these brand new ones that I buy with uh, my brake kits, but that'll also sharpen up the way that the bike looks. Went ahead and uh, got the reflectors ready, polished the hardware and that'll look really nice. Once we put them on there, I had to change that one to match the front ones. So here's what it looks like now. I went ahead and made those match. I uh, just made this a little bit longer. These, these are the cables actually that came on my little Voyager. There's a, what that little extra length will do. It allows that cable to have a more natural flow into that. And that, that'll be cool. So tomorrow I'll Last tighten week. that up. Barrel adjusters. And those kind of faded and broke right there. And I actually have replacement ones that I buy with my kids. And they are like a regular alloy. And they look nice. So I got them already on there. So that'll be cool. I'm actually looking online right now for one of these. I'm going to try to get a really crisp one. If not, maybe I'll restore this one. But Overall, the bike's in good condition. I do see a few spots that I probably going to need to touch up right here. Because that right there could turn into bad rust. I am going to go ahead and primer that and prep it and just to make sure it's not, you know, stays bare like that. And it looks like we do have a small ding on the, on the tube. Not sure you can do much with that. All right, so I went ahead and changed that cable out. And I did have to put some new inner wire in it as well. So it would be able to take that extra loop. So that's the natural pattern there that has a less stress on the cable. So that'll go in nicely. And then here's this one too. Just a little bit longer and see the difference how that's got a nice curve to it instead of going almost straight across because that's that was a lot of stress on that cable. So I went ahead and make sure I had plenty of lube in there as well as in that one there. I went ahead and put some oil as well right here to make sure it was good to go. So I went ahead and put the crank set back on it. So that shined up pretty nice. Overall, I guess it looked okay. And then I went ahead and attached the pedals to it. Here's how it came out with the white. And I went ahead and like I said earlier, changed out this cable, but I am gonna go ahead and wait for the light gray ones that I ordered. So you, these look more authentic, I noticed, you know, as I found them and I started using them. And then the last thing is the tape. I will be changing that out. And uh, here's those new clips, it's gonna be nice. I did find one of these and they actually made me an offer for only like 12 bucks I can get it. It's in better condition than this one. I did have to replace this cable because it took extra loop there. So I went ahead and once I get it adjusted, I'll cut that off. 
But uh, everything else is pretty much ready to go. I went ahead and tested the gears and it seems to be shifting nicely. So that, that'll be nice. So here's the other side. This is actually the better one right here. It's got the perfect cap on it. So it's a sweet looking no, pedal there. the original seat that I saw on these bikes right here. See that shape right there? That's what these seats look like. But I'm considering doing a brook saddle, but we'll see. And I talked about doing a white bar tape. I think that might look really good on this car. <laughs> on this little spot I showed you earlier so check it out the rust is now gone so that was a pretty good size area there and uh, I ordered the the paint um, coolestcolors.com they have all the Schwinn colors for the stingrays and crates and this was actually one of the colors of the stingrays but yeah I'm glad I got that rust off of there that's bare metal right there and then the perimeter is just where the paint was starting to get eaten up. So I did put that rust remover, let it sit for a while, cleaned it off, and then gave it a little bit of a fine steel wool to try to finish off that that feel right there. And you can still feel it, but it's not as bad. I kept seeing rust around the paint perimeter, and I was able to dig in a little deeper and get all of it out. And I'm going to go ahead and put the metal cleaner before I paint it. So I'm going to do a coat of primer on it right now and let it sit overnight. Good news is this thing's smooth to the touch now. Like it feels like there's not a difference between those two surfaces. So first coat of primer is on and that covered up all those little perimeter dark spots. So that'll be nice. And I'll let that dry and I'll come back and give it a, a little smooth over to make it even. And then if it needs it, I'll give it another coat. But at least that protects the frame from getting any further corrosion at so all. So I went ahead and uh, let it dry and gave it a second coat. Actually, I sanded it down first with some 1000 grade sandpaper, a little bit of steel wool, super fine. And then I gave it another coat and it blended in nicely. So I'm gonna let it dry and then tomorrow I'll give it one more smooth over. We'll wait on that paint and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I just took off the head badge. Finally found a little screwdriver head and I put a little bit of WD-40 to make sure that they didn't break off in there. They're super small. So I'm gonna and wipe that down now. I did put those inside here. So there they are, getting any rust out of the way. And here's the badge, but I'm gonna see if I can touch it up. But I got some red paint. Let's see if I can touch up that area there. And definitely I can't do that Chicago, that's super small. And that's like, you know, I think it's the pretty on the today. So these are the ones I was telling you guys about. These are the lighter gray. These are a Wynan. And these are as close as you're gonna get to the original. Here's a comparison right here. This one right here is the one I just got in, in the middle. And as you can see, you know, it's a lighter gray than the one right next to it. This is the one that was that I was gonna put on, but I decided to wait to get these and this is how they come packaged. So these are, uh, you know, Schwinn approved cables. And these are the ones that you'll find on eBay all the time. And I, they work basically, you know, but I was one of the lighter gray ones. So if you want the more authentic ones, look for these right here, this logo. And uh, it's definitely, but anyway, here's the original one. This came off a bike. If you notice, this is a little different color because it's just yellowed from time. But if you look at some of the spots where it's still in, you know, like where it was hidden, it's definitely the same color. And then for the bad news is I got my derailleur in there ordered, the G275. Unfortunately, the seller sent me the G250, which I have a lot of these already in better condition than this one. But yeah, I was disappointed, you know, I was getting ready to finish everything the night and I had to wait. So I'm just going to buy a different one. So the rear cable is on. Run right through here. Loop. And then I was able to keep the original cable that came with the bike and it was just long enough to reach back in there. And uh, I went ahead and on this side, I already got the 
trim brake on it. I think that red's gonna look really cool on there. And uh, that's the classic Schwinn brake. So I'm gonna ahead and do all four of them like that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get all the brakes on and test the cables. Yep, it's working. So I had to loosen the bike up on the rack a little bit because uh, the cable was getting tied down. Nice. Well, I like it, very little clearance. And good grab there. So that lets me work. Cables are nice and tight. And uh, nice and even. And we got the light gray cables on. Get up on the ladder here. So again, with those loops like that, that inner cable moves freely through there and they're nice and lubed. So they're really uh, sweet to the touch now. So, all right, we're good to go. We'll go ahead and get that head badge on. And uh, now just waiting on the right, the railer. Could have had that done tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and put the reflectors on it. And uh, I think we should be good to go. All right, I got the badge on. I went ahead and uh, repainted the little red area and then the Schwinn logo used to accept the white. Last thing is the tape. This tape uh, appears to probably be a replacement tape at some point because there's no way that the dealership would have done this. They usually double cross those back there so you don't see that. And they usually tuck them in there as well or not even tucked. So I'll do it. And I'm really considering white. The more I thought about it, I can always go back to black, you know, because white's going to get dirty, obviously. All right, so I went ahead and removed that front derailleur. You can see a little bit of damage there. That's the derailleur cost us all. I should be able to touch that up as well just to make sure that there's no exposed metal showing underneath because that's how rust begins. Here is the derailleur itself. I went ahead and took the cage off of it. So these, uh, you know, come apart. As you can see, it's got two bolts here that go on these. That's a spring-loaded mechanism right there that basically allows it to move back and forth. So that's gonna be a little tricky to stretch over and put in, but I'll, I'll be able to do it. Uh, these are kind of cool. This, these have the hinge on them. So you take this bolt off and then this just flips over and you can take it right off. And then it's got the adjusters right here. But yeah, this cage is pretty cool. It's got like a little second piece attached to it that acts like a little guard. So see if you take this off, it's like that. So when I took it apart, I go, oh cool, it's two different parts. They're basically, you know, molded against each other. So when I get the replacement, I ended up getting um, a GT290. This is a GT285. And according to the catalog in 1977, they put the GT275. And if you look at them, they're all identical. They all have this exact same, uh, you know, look to them, the closed cage at the top with that little hole there. So I'm not really sure what the difference is. So I'll look at it when it comes in. There might be a difference on the way that this is set up. I know that the, the only difference I saw so far visually was that this is white versus black. So that might be about the only difference, but I'm sure there might be other things that I'll be able to notice once I get that one in. So that one's coming in. I ended up getting it for only $7.99. It was on a bid and I just put the bid in. Nobody else bid, so I got it for eight bucks basically. Bar tape off and boy this thing is stuck on there good it's uh, coming off in pieces so it's really stuck on there it became part of the handlebar and I tried uh, brushing some paint thinner over it to dissolve some of that I started using it with a rag here just to wipe it down to get some of that grime off of there but yeah I think the longest trip I was able to take off there was about six inches keep it break through a lot of time and a lot of paint thinner and rags it definitely uh, came off. Right, so we'll go ahead and do the other side. And I think this time I'm gonna try using uh, my heat gun. And I thought about doing that initially, but I already had used uh, some of that lacquer thinner and I thought that might actually be a, kind of a combustible combination. So I'm gonna try it and uh, see how it works yes. out. Only the heat gun just made that like putty. And you can see it's rolling off in complete pieces. Well, it definitely took a lot less time and it was a lot less hassle and that's a, not such a mess, so. Now we'll go back to the paint thinner now on a rag and wipe that down. That shouldn't take that down. The real deal, old school caps made by uh, Schwinn or Schwinn approved. Chrome is perfect on them. Check that out. We'll then use the original ones. So I'm going to dip them in some uh, evaporust to get some of that perimeter rust around the bottom there. 
But overall, though, they're in pretty good shape. I'm going to go with the saddle after all. And this saddle actually came off my Raleigh that I just got in a while back. Definitely looks cool. This is a 1975, or at least what year the bike is, so I'm assuming that this, the saddles are from that same era. So it's a good fit for the bike, and it looks really sweet on there. So it's a brown leather, so that'll play off well, nicely with the leash right here. And then that white bar tape is gonna look good, so I definitely decided to go with white. Basically, you shined it. I used good old saddle soap, some ink oil, and then I also used a little bit of shoe polish. Shoe polish is what brought that luster out. There was some big scuffs right here, and that shoe polish took care of that, and it just really gave it a beautiful shine. So I was considering getting a different one, because this one actually belongs to the Raleigh over there. I put that saddle on it, but yeah, this thing looks awesome on here. I'm really happy that it was available to just to slap on here. Definitely makes a big impact on the way the bike looks. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we'll let her be for the rest of the night. Uh, nothing else I can do with it. I don't have the tape. It's Friday and I didn't get my paint either. So I'm a little bummed that I can't. Maybe I'll get it tomorrow. Cause this thing's pretty much ready to finish off. Uh, still waiting on the derailleur. Waiting on my Touch up paint, got this all primered out, ready to go. Came out pretty smooth, feels good to the touch. And I uh, got a little reflectors back on it, so you ready to go here. All right, well, great news. I got all the stuff I was waiting on. So here it is, guys. Got my paint. I think that's my derailleur, I'm pretty sure, because I always come in those size boxes. And then that's a stand. I got a second one because I got the first one already and I really liked it, so I ordered another one. And then I also got this right here. This is something that I hear a lot of people rave about. But here's the best part, guys. Check it out. My derailleur did come in. Look at the chrome on that sucker. Score big time, man. It's awesome. Look at the back of this thing. Can't believe how clean this thing is. Look at that. It looks like it's never been on a bike. So that's what I'm talking about right there. So that's what makes a bike really stand out when you have everything just gleaming and shining. And again, the, you can see a little bit of the chain wear on which is what you're supposed to see on. And then here's the paint, check it out. The little in line touch up paint. Here's the bike, so you can kind of see the, how the color. And the actual color inside the bottle looks a little darker, but that's normal for the bottles. To... I'm gonna basically just uh, put it on a little lid, thin it out a little bit, and then just you know, use a different smaller brush, try to lay it around there so it should look better. This is the primer that's on the frame. And this is the original paint right out of the little jar. And it was a little bit too green. I believe there's two different colors. There's flamboyant lime and lime green as the two different colors. I think they're slightly different because it didn't quite match the bike like I thought it was going to. So I had to play with it a little bit. So what I did was I added this tone of yellow. I knew that that yellow would give it that that color right there. See, that's got more of a yellowish green. But yeah, it was similar to what I did with my uh, blue paint where I just mixed different colors to get it. All right, so the, the weather is done. I went ahead and put the original clamp on it. This particular one was actually designed for the smaller frame, flash wheel frames like the Varsity Continental Suburban. So these are wider diameter for the chromoly frames. So I had to change it and I'm glad I did because it looks awesome. Hardware on is just better as what I was noticing. Yeah, this one's got the more ornate band on Definitely a better derailleur overall. Best part is that the chroma on that was really good to begin with. So I'm glad I was able to just mount that on there. And that wasn't easy putting that back on there. I tell you, I had to use a vice grip to be able to hold it and then pull that second one over to, you know, pop that screw in there, so. But did get it done and detailed it a little bit. And $7.99 got me this beautiful derailleur, so I'm really excited about it. What's well, on there? There it is. She got the chrome with that derailleur now. So all the hardware looks great on here now. It is the correct one. Man, it came out awesome. I just tested it and it shows beautifully. And one step closer. And today is the day we'll put the tape on it. Never got the white tape I ordered. I couldn't wait any longer, so I knew I had a roll of white tape 
for my white 1970 varsity so this is the white tape i was going to do the cloth but i'm going to go ahead and go with this which actually will be more durable and it'll be easy to keep clean and wipe down whenever but if you notice you these usually you can pull you know you can flip them over at the end the tape underneath if i do that this guy's just going to crack all the way down so i'm going to have to basically just slip the tape underneath there so I can still put the tape underneath, but not flip this thing over. Otherwise, I'll be cracking it. So I want to try to preserve these as much as possible. And then what I did was to get this underneath that hood, I went ahead and uh, did a little pre-wrap right underneath it. Because these are some angles you normally wouldn't take when you're wrapping. But now when I go over it with the actual tape, I'll loop back over it without having to get underneath there. And it might be a little cleaner. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, that side's done. Nicely tucked on the end, evenly wrapped, no chrome splits anywhere. Started, I do these two strips first and tuck them underneath there to make sure I cover up those clamps and do the same thing on this side. And then when I put the next roll, it's gonna you know, cover up the, the top and bottom and that seemed to work the best. All right, they're both on, they came out pretty good. I like the white and I like that I use the Schwinn vinyl tape because you know that's going to last longer and I can wipe it clean. All right well I went ahead and put her down I think she's finally done. So again 1977 Superior it's going to be another addition to my lightweight category collection. So tomorrow morning I'll just go ahead and dust her off and take her outside and take some shots out there. There she is she's all done 1977 Superior. Lime green, awesome color. Cleaned up great. It was already in great shape. So basically it's a matter of just doing some tweaking to it. Again, this uh, Superior decals are really good. That one's got a little bit of damage on the S, but check out the other side. The other side is perfect. This particular logo was introduced in 1976. So this was the second year that this uh, logo was seen. And the combination was the Schwinn went there and the name of the bike went up there. Rail is really clean, works perfectly. Crank set, looking good. Got the safety notice here on your down tube about wet rims. And this is the first one I've seen on an actual rim too. Check this out. So this is totally from when they first made it. So yeah, the bike cleaned up beautifully. Definitely will add this to the lightweight collection get on to the next project so we'll go ahead and go back to work and then later tonight after six I'll take it out and shoot some more video outside doing the final shots of the bike it's kind of a nice evening today here in South Florida it feels like about like 85 or less nice cooler feel out here Again, there's uh, that little touch-up that I did back there. It's slightly darker than the finish, but that's kind of what I had to do for it to stick. But definitely better than that rust spot. And then from, you know, at a glance, it just kind of blends in with the rest of the frame. So the goal was to basically protect the frame from any other rust happening there. So that was good.